Because when we took another look at that sequence after the whistle behind the Anaheim net, it was actually Niedermeyer that got the first shot in. Gabrick responded, but again, no retaliation from the Anaheim captain. Plenty of words, however, from Scott Niedermeyer. And taking a look, at super slow-mo bid on the shot by Brian Ralston. He was looking for the tip in front, and I think Minnesota's probably very sick of seeing that. Chris Pronger using that reach and that tremendous stick position of his to deflect shots, to deflect passes out of harm's way. I know the Ducks were sick of it last May when they played the Edmonton Oilers. Well, Pronger has been sensational, and the Ducks, two to form, have weathered the early storm. Just 6-10 remaining here in the opening period. Now it's Walls centering Gabrick and Dimitri, and a great right pad save on Walls by Brzezgalov, and that one went off his chest. I'm not sure he saw it as Dimitri, or Schultz, excuse me, just threw it towards the net out of the corner. And Gabrick just threw an elbow on Pronger, and when Pronger gets mad, Better get your head up in a hurry. Walls with a bid that actually hit Bayou. And now here's McDonald streaking in, and his shot deflected into the protective netting. Janssen able to reach back and get a piece of it. Andy McDonald, along with Ryan Getzloff, 12 shots on goal in this series. That leads the Ducks through the first three games. Yeah, he's been dangerous. It's all about speed with McDonald, even in super slow-mo. He looks like he's moving pretty quickly, but a nice defensive play by Onsen to get across, get his stick into the shooting lane and deflect that puck up and over the glass. Sean Thornton comes out with May and Shannon. Game three of this series, Thornton made his playoff debut. And he told me this morning, he said, a lot different than playing in the playoffs in the AHL. Not to overstate the obvious. We're going to get a whistle and a penalty call here. The fourth line has drawn an Anaheim power play opportunity, it would appear. As the Ducks will have the extra man when we come back in a scoreless first period in St. Paul. going and Keith Carney actually was knocked off the puck by Ryan Shannon. Good speed by Shannon. He gets a good angle on him. When Carney takes one hand off the stick and uses his other one to control Shannon, he gets hit with a holding penalty. So a great opportunity here for the Ducks who've done a nice job of weathering the storm and now with a power play chance of a real good opportunity of getting the lead in this series. The Anaheim power play has been awesome. Three for 11, that's better than 27%. They will miss Francois Beauchemin, who has two of the three duck power play goals so far. Power play begins with Scott Niedermeyer and Chris Pronger at the points. McDonald, Kunitz, and Perry up front. Carney, the plus-minus leader for the Wild this season at plus 22, a big part of their penalty kill, sits for holding at 14.30. Pronger at the line, off the stick of Perry, and sent back down by the Wild, who will get a quick change on the kill. Yeah, I really thought that that was an attempted shot for a deflection by Chris Pronger. And he passes the puck very hard, but uh, that was a little bit too hard for Corey Perry to handle. McDonald separated from the puck below the goal line, and the Wild come away with it. Here's Walls pressing the issue shorthanded. As Bayou with him, drops it back. Bayou shot one off of Walls' leg. Brzezgalov trying to keep it in play. Shoveled it ahead for Niedermeyer. 
And Anaheim able to recover possession. Well, what we have seen from this Anaheim power play are easy entries into the zone, and it's all about the passing ability of the Ducks. You saw it on that last entry. Great pass from Niedermeyer to McDonald, and they're able to get into the zone and get set up. And here's what I'm talking about. Niedermeyer, perfect pass, right through what players call the triangle between the heel and the toe of the skate. McDonald gets into the zone, the power play gets set up, and perhaps Ken Huskins rush that shot just a little bit. I'm sure when he gets back to the Anaheim bench, Randy Carlisle will say, take your time, plenty of time in the offensive zone to really work the puck around and fatigue the penalty killer. Yeah, Andre Rassico, the linesman, makes the call. The Ducks unable to stay on side there. And we'll remind you that you can be at Honda Center for all the action this spring in the 07 Stanley Cup playoffs. All you have to do is put a seat deposit for next year's season tickets down. Call 877-WILDWING or log on to AnaheimDucks.com for more information. A minute five remains in the Anaheim power play and another easy entry. And Solani got it in for Scott Niedermeyer. Quick puck movement, works it around. They over, overload the right side of the zone. Solani takes it behind the net and loses the handle. Scott Niedermeyer drops down. Solani back for Pronger across, and the one-timer by Getzloff, who fanned on it. Well, that's too bad. They set it up nicely. Well, they moved it around quickly. And, you know, eventually when you move the puck as crisply as the Ducks are moving it, you get prime scoring territory with the puck on your stick. Down low, it's Solani. Half a minute in the power play. Tamu looks up. Back to the point for Getzloff. Getzloff looks, uses that long reach down to Solani, who tried to quickly go high short side, missed the net, and it comes around and out. Remember, the Ducks are thinking about Nick Backstrom and the style where sometimes he has a tendency to overplay situations and be a little bit too aggressive. If he gets too far out of that goal crease, those quick shots, even from severe angles, become very dangerous. Penalty to Carney winding down. He will step out of the box and Minnesota full strength. Anaheim authored just one shot on goal in their two minute man advantage. No score, 325 to go in the first. Rob Niedermeyer pestering Burns and then Moen fan trying to one time. Puck trickles back to neutral ice and Burns pounces on it as Walls with him. Burns from an angle and the rebound kick past two driving Minnesota players. Now. It's Paulson the other way, and he whips one using the defenseman as a screen, and Backstrom with a good save covers off. Ilya Brzgalov comes up with a real nice stop on Brent Burns. Burns, very offensive-minded defenseman. See, he's outside of the dot when he releases that puck. So Huskins does his job, forces the player wide from that angle. There is not much to shoot against when you're playing a goaltender the size of Ilya Brzgalov. From super slow-mo, you see Brzgalov able to get the blocker on that puck deflected harmlessly away from the front of the net. Teams have combined for 23 shots on goal in the first 17 minutes. 14-9 advantage for Minnesota, no score. Solani in the left corner in front for McDonald, who had his stick lifted at the moment of truth by Schultz. And the Wild feed it back out. Demetra got bumped by Solani, and the loose puck angled off the boards and out by Scott Niedermeyer. Kunitz lifts it in. Schultz pressure, moves it up the near boards, and the Wild away. Radovojevic got it to Demetra. Across the line, drops it back for Gabber. Makes a couple moves and then fires wide. Up the far boards, Burns steps from the point, bumped by Paulson. Good play by Sammy, and O'Donnell recovers the puck for Scott Niedermeyer. Yeah, what a nice play by Sean O'Donnell to use his body, get to a loose puck, and then chip it to his teammate for an easy clear. Rob Niedermeyer below the goal line, using his body to protect the puck, got it back for his brother. Tries to get it to the net, it's blocked, sent back to the point, and Niedermeyer able to step back in and keep the puck alive. Getzloff covers the point for him, slides it across. O'Donnell, a pass to the slot that went through Mullen. Rob Niedermeyer tied up with Nick Backstrom, and Backstrom right now gesturing to the official in the corner, begging for a goalie interference penalty. O'Donnell stepped up at the blue line, forced Ralston wide, and Penner recovers behind the net, rims it around, but Carney activates to keep it up the right boards, then gets upended. Ralston from behind the goal. Cycles it back to the corner. Parrish returns the favor, goes off a Skula stick to the line, and a long shot blocked by O'Donnell, who angled it out. That's sent back in by Skula. Offside is the call once again by Rassico. 
I mentioned moments ago that Nick Backstrom was trying to get a call. Here was the contact. Watch Rob Niedermeyer stationed in front of the net and keep an eye on him. He gets in behind, loses his balance for a second, actually ends up behind the goaltender and quite honestly doesn't go out of his way to get out of the way of Nicholas Backstrom. And uh, as a former goaltender, I would say that Nick Baxter may have had a valid beef there. You're just trying to get your union status back. The union status left a long time ago, Johnny. I've been lobbying for smaller pads for how many years now? Just a minute, 20 to go here in a scoreless first period as the battle along the far boards inside the Anaheim zone finally won by Kunitz, who clears. Skula feathers it in. Turning to get it is Huskins. Looks over his shoulder, sees Adam Hall coming and reverses it away. Solani drops down to help out, got it away to center. McDonald couldn't win the race for it, but still battles for it. Under a minute to go in the period. Todd White has it in the neutral zone and lifts it on the backhand in. Minnesota will get one last change. Pronger picks it up from behind the goal and just does a circle. Yep. Anaheim, the longer this game goes tied, I really think it favors the Ducks. It's the Minnesota Wild that are trying to capture momentum in this series. But you do get the feeling, Johnny, that the first goal of this game is going to be huge. Schultz pass broken up in the neutral zone. Nice play there by Paulson, who takes it into the Minnesota end. Again, pulls it in and takes a shot that just missed the mark. Gabrick bumped by Paulson, who took it away. Sammy Paulson drops it back. Moen comes in, pulls it to the back end, curls it back. It's loose at the side of the goal and taken away by Dimitra. And once again, it's the shutdown line, not only shutting people down, but creating scoring chances for themselves. Final 10 seconds of the period. Burns handles from behind the goal. Excuse me, it's Janssen ahead for Schultz. His pass thrown into the Anaheim zone and gloved down by Corey Perry. The Ducks survive the first period. And words between Corey Perry and Brian Ralston forcing the linesman to intervene as the period comes to a close. A couple things come to mind in the opening 20. Number one, the Wild did get 14 shots, a lot from the perimeter. Brzgalov was solid, but he didn't have to make a lot of saves on rebounds. His club continues to make great defensive plays in front of him. And they continue to frustrate the state of hockey. Through one period of play at the XL Energy Center. No score between the Wild and Ducks in Game 4 of their Western Conference quarterfinal series. the Ducks and Minnesota Wild. No score. After 20 minutes of play, John and Brian back with you inside the XL Energy Center. We're joined downstairs outside the Ducks locker room by defenseman Sean O'Donnell. And Sean, in the absence of Francois Beauchemin tonight, all three of the defensive pairings shaken up a bit, but I'm thinking your adjustment might not be the most difficult. Uh, no, I think uh, with the exception of one shift, I've, I've played with, uh, with Pronger, who I normally played with, and then the other one I had was Scotty Niedermeyer, so... If that's the way Dave wants to do it, I don't mind playing with either one of those guys. Yeah, not a bad choice, that's for sure. Sean, tell us how you guys have been able to hold the blue line. So much has been said and written here, especially in the Minnesota papers, about Anaheim's system. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the forwards. I think that we're doing a good job of keeping tight gaps, but it makes it a lot easier when the forwards come straight back and it forces Minnesota to attack us full speed as opposed to doing drop passes and zigzagging and changing lanes. Anytime they can do that, uh, you know, they can kind of slow up their speed a little bit, and it's, it's tougher on us. So when we have good back pressure, it makes them go as fast as they can down on us, and, and we can gauge their speed a lot better and stand up at the blue line. Talk to us a little bit about confidence and how important it is in the postseason because your club certainly looks like a confident group. 
We are. I think that we, uh, you know, one of the things about playoff hockey is I think that that's the style we've played most of the year. You know, the way you're seeing us play now is the way we played in October, November, and December. And, uh, you know, we're comfortable with it. We like the physical stuff. We like the low scoring, low chance games. And, uh, you know, Briz has given us great goaltending right now. So, you know, we're, uh, we're a confident bunch. And, and we, uh, you know, we thought we had a pretty good first period. And we'd really like to wrap this thing up tonight and not give uh, Minnesota any momentum. Sean, in order to do that, this building has an awful lot of energy, and it is the feeling the longer you can keep it at least tied or better and keep this crowd out of the game, the easier it might make your job? Well, I don't know about easier, but I think that, you know, these fans are just waiting for something to cheer for. I mean, they're, they're great fans here, you know, arguably the best in the league, and, and right now they're, you can kind of tell they're kind of antsy right now, and, uh, you know, they're waiting for a reason to really get on their feet and get behind their team. So we're doing our best to try and keep them out of it, and you know, hopefully get that first goal and, and maybe frustrate the fans a little bit and frustrate their team and see what we can go from there. Sean, as always, thanks and good luck. Okay, thanks, guys. Sean O'Donnell joining us downstairs. We're through one period of play here at the XL Energy Center. It's game four between the Wild and Ducks. Anaheim leads the series three games to none. We have no score. Minnesota Wild here at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. Game four of the series between these two clubs in the Western Conference. The Ducks on top, three games to none. Busy night in the Stanley Cup playoffs here on this Tuesday. Five games in all, and a couple are complete. The Rangers with a touchdown and the extra point embarrass Atlanta tonight. Seven nothing. Henrik Lundqvist gets the shutout in that game. Ryan Callahan had a pair of goals. So did Michael Nylander. And Yarmer Yager, at last report, had three assists. More importantly, the Rangers up three games to none, and they will be at home for game four in that series. Ottawa now going home with a three games to one lead over the Pittsburgh Penguins by virtue of tonight's two to one victory over the Pittsburgh Penguins. Anton Volchenkov had the game winning goal in the third period, and that one, Ray Emery gets the win in goal. Dallas trailing Vancouver 2 1 in their series, and they're playing game four tonight down at the American Airlines Center. And they have made it through two periods of play and yet no score in that one. Coming up a little bit later on tonight, game three between the Calgary Flames and the Detroit Red Wings. The Wings on top, two games to none, as Calgary looking to hold serve with that series going back north of the border. Here in Minnesota, the Ducks with a chance to become the first team in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs to advance to the second round. They're scoreless with the Wild through one period of play.
unique location for adult beverages and snacks located right behind the goal the Ducks defended both the first and the third period and it's also for folks who have seats along the glass. Let's take a look at our highlights from the opening period of play. Some good hits early on and uh, you knew that this was going to be physical. Both teams finished their checks and did a nice job keeping the sticks down for the most part. As a result there weren't a lot of power plays in the opening period. Andy McDonald had a good shot and you saw the goaltender back and take a little peek. Ilya Briskalov left the rebound. Veyu would blow it about two feet wider than that. Both goaltenders actually have had a couple of pucks hit him in the chest and come right back out in front of the net. Sean Thornton with a nice rush up ice and I thought that the Ducks fourth line really played quite effectively in the opening 20 minutes. You get the sense that Minnesota is just throwing everything towards the Anaheim net. That may have been Ilya Brzezlov's best save of the opening period. Kent Huskins, I thought, did a nice job. He's going to play increased minutes, of course, without Francois Beauchemin kept the wild attacking forwards wide on that last offensive chance. Now look at the numbers through 20 minutes of play. Minnesota with a shot advantage. Both teams fail on the power play with one chance each. You said they were throwing pucks at the net. Hazy, they might be throwing everything, including players, at the Anaheim net. And significant, Johnny, four odd man rushes in the opening period all belong to the Ducks. That's what happens when you have your opponent in a situation where they are pressing, where their defense are pinching down the boards and trying to help their forwards create a little bit more offense. They're gambling a little bit in this game. They're a desperate team. They will throw caution to the wind at times. The Ducks want to play a solid road game and take advantage. Well, the feeling for many in Minnesota, they have nothing to lose. If they lose, they have the summer ahead of them. The Ducks lead the series three games to none. Game four scoreless through one here in St. Paul. the ice and maybe at another arena here at the XL Energy Center where they celebrate the game in the state of Minnesota. No score through one period of play. In the absence of Francois Beauchemin tonight, we knew that the Ducks were going to have to look elsewhere to pick up those minutes. He usually gets about 28 a game. We knew Kent Huskins was going to get some of them. He played over seven minutes in the first period, Brian. He hasn't played more than 10 in any game in this series. He did a great job. Uh, it was interesting what Dave Ferris said. He, he talked to Aaron Rome and he said, just be confident. Rely on the system because there's a lot of other people that are playing well defensively in front of you. And I think that's what we saw in the opening 20 minutes. Once again, Minnesota unable to get in behind the Anaheim defense. Remember, this is a quick strike offensive team, the Minnesota Wild are. They have not been able to get in behind the duck defense. So the system 
is a big reason why Anaheim has been able to keep so many pucks out of their net. How daunting and difficult will it be for, say, Aaron Rome to hold that blue line when he looks up and he sees Gabrick or Demetra trying to get some speed in the neutral zone? Well, it's going to be intimidating, and uh, of course, the second period is the tough change period, and it's it's easier for Jacques Lemaire to get that matchup. Marion Gabrick against the inexperienced Anaheim defender. So this second period is crucial for the Ducks. Also no surprise, both Scott Niedermeyer and Chris Pronger exceeding 10 minutes of ice time in that first period of play. I hope they're catching their breath. Chances are they're going to get a lot more in the final two periods. We're back with the second period of play in a moment. CTV presents Anaheim Ducks Hockey. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Good call. By Honda, the power of dreams. And by Pepsi. It's the Cola. Well, you better get back to your seats because the second period's getting ready to begin. We're talking, Johnny, about the minutes played by Scott Niedermeyer and Chris Pronger. See the averages for the season just over the 27 minute mark for both tonight. They both played just over 10 minutes in the opening period, so they're on track to play about 30 or more. I expect it will be more because if the Ducks get a lead, you know that Randy Carlisle will shorten his bench even further. Interesting thing about Chris Pronger, you saw his average ice time, 27.05. Over the course of his career, he has averaged over 29 minutes a game in the postseason. Of course, that is due in part because certain games go into overtime. But the one thing that Carlisle knows is that he has got a couple of horses in the lineup tonight that never seem to get tired. Now we were talking about Kent Huskins ice time. There was a game earlier this season at Nashville back in January when Huskins played over 21 minutes. That was early in January when both Pronger and Beauchemin were out of the lineup. So it's not as if he can't log some serious ice time for the back on the blue line. I'm sure he will by the time it's done tonight. A quick change to start this second period for Randy Carlisle. He He's trying to keep McDonald, Solani, and Kunitz away from the Gabrick line. Mary Gabrick's been very vocal in the uh, Minnesota papers about how he wants to get away from Sammy Paulson. There's a lot of guys in the league that would echo yeah. that sentiment. Here's Parrish up right wing working on O'Donnell. Oh, a high shot off the angle that's fought off by Brizgalov. Yeah, and fought off a good description of that save because it, it, it appeared to really handcuff Ilya Brzgala. Moen got a bump on Janssen, and Janssen is hobbled. Not putting any weight on his left skate right now back in the Minnesota zone. Apparently, maybe a little stinger because now he 
He's able to skate it up and move the puck out of the zone. A little give and go by Ralston. Couldn't get to the return feed without turning back, though, from White. And he spins it around the boards out of the reach of Parrish. Skula activates from the right point. Keeps it alive. Turns back. Fires that one. Hit Parrish in front. He turns and put the rebound right on. Brzezgalov made the save. To the line. Skula across for Carney. Snapshot. Didn't get through. Was deflected by Parrish, but ended up in the corner. Pronger tried to fire it out. Reverse back around, and Kunitz nudges it in. Solani pressures Backstrom, who wandered out, and he really didn't do so with a great deal of conviction at first. You know what, though, but it was a good play by Nick Backstrom. I don't think Tim Solani spotted Nick Backstrom creeping out of the goal crease. He thought he had a little bit more time to get to that puck. Now McDonald joined by Penner across the line. The trailer, Perry McDonald, players it right on on the rebound, laying the slot, cleared away by the Wild. Penner was blocking out the sun at the top of the crease. Now Getzloff chases on the forecheck, and the puck sent all the way back into the Anaheim zone. No icing. And takes the hit from Veu, but reverses it back for the captain. Huskins has done that on a number of occasions tonight. He has taken the hit to make the play. Interesting play moments ago by Scott Niedermeyer. He didn't try to make a pass. He slapped the puck directly at a Minnesota Wild defender. Ariel Lemieux used to do that all the time when he played for the Pittsburgh Penguins because it's pretty difficult to control a puck that has been slapped at you with a lot of velocity on it. Huskins turns away from the hit of Hall. His pass behind the net, though, gets off unable to possess as Bouchard stepped into it. Koibu off Cashmark keeps it alive for Bouchard behind the net. He can't reach it. It comes all the way to Burns, who activates from the point. Bouchard trying to stuff it on the backhand from behind the goal, and the save made by Brisgal off the rebound, away by Penner. And Backstrom once again comes out of the goal crease and negates another icing. The Ducks in transition in the stretch pass. May can't get it over for Perry. Cleared away. Scott Niedermeyer plays it back, and Bugard took a run at him. May comes over to talk to him about it. Play goes on. Shannon throws it to the net. Blockered away by Backstrom. It was run into by Thornton. And then Bugard takes a run at Thornton. They continue to talk. And play goes on. Parrish banks it into the Anaheim zone. Been a little nasty on this shift. Well, Bugard could take a penalty virtually every shift that he is on the ice. He has taken some runs in this game. Thornton feeds it to the net. It went right through the feet of Shannon, who was tied up by Skula. Ralston drops back. And now moves it ahead. Walls speeds in. His shot stick to the corner by Brzezgalov. Wes Walls had four shots on goal in that opening period. And Aaron Rome just crunched him along the boards, and he's slow to get back up. Well, one of the things Randy Carlisle was talking about with Aaron Rome was the size of Rome. Now, you look at him, you don't think he's 240, do you? Radovojevic off the angle of the rebound of the slot, and that shot deflected away as Skula got to it. Burns at the point, shovels it to the net, deflected right on by Gabarik, and a save by Brzezgalov. A good sequence for Ilya Brzezgalov. The Wild get a couple of good opportunities, and they are attacking the goal crease very aggressively in this period. It's the players away from the shot who are always most dangerous. Brzezgalov came up with a couple of beauties. That one through traffic. This one, severe angle, that was the one that he kind of fought down. Got about halfway there, and you know what? Stop it right here, guys, and look at the right knee of Derek Bugart. He's trying to throw another knee. The league's going to have to take a look at this guy because he's going to hurt someone's career here. I mean, that, that's the third knee he is throwing in this series. A little miscommunication off the of one faceoff by the Ducks. Burns trying to pass it across, and a great blocker saved by Brzezgalov on Koivu. Outstanding stop that time with the blocker by Brzezgalov. Boy, he's, he seems to be in the zone, moving very effortlessly around the Anaheim goal crease. Pronger nudges it along. Rob Niedermeyer drops down. Bouchard wins the puck, though. Off Koivu, still in the corner. Up the boards and pounced on by Paulson, who's two on one if he hurries, but he tries to make the pass, and that is snipped out and picked off. 
Now Newmelin was too far behind the defense. Paulson wires one and Backstrom way out. The rebound corralled by Rob Niedermeyer looking for someone coming late. Instead throws it on net and a glove saved by the Minnesota netminder. And Bayou and Paulson mix it up in front in steps Travis Mall. Yeah, and there's Bayou throwing a couple of short punches. You know, they would love to get any member of these three Anaheim forwards off the ice and into the box. Let's go back now to that save by Ilya Brzgalov. Moves quickly across left to right and takes away what looked like a sure wild goal. Nicholas Backstrom, not going to beat him up top, but look at the punishment that Sammy Paulson takes. In a game like this, there's the punch that was thrown that was not called. I don't know, maybe well, they called it. They did call Stephon it. Stefan Bayou is in the box. Well, he's shaking his head, but that, you know, that's a dumb penalty. You can get away when you're in a scrum with face washes and things of that nature, nature but when you actually throw a punch, there's a very good chance the referee is going to make the call. So the Ducks get their second power play of the game as a result. And a scoreless tie, a huge opportunity as White blocks the pass by Pronger. He retreats to neutral ice with it. Hands it off for Scott Niedermeyer who skates it in. Serves it over. Bid by Getzloff is blocked to the corner but Solani recovers. Getzloff finds Scott Niedermeyer now middle of the ice. Pronger taps it over for Getzloff. Back to Pronger. One timer just wide rebound. Oh just got away from Scott Niedermeyer as his stick was lifted at the last moment. Pronger keeps it alive. Niedermeyer gets it to Getzloff. Back to Pronger again. He scores. Chris Pronger with a bomb from the blue line. And the Ducks make Minnesota pay. Well, this Anaheim power play once again has been the difference in this series so far. And Pronger has an overpowering shot from the point, but it's always about the traffic that is set up in front of the opposing goaltender is the main reason why pucks end up in the back of the net. There's the shot you saw Scott Niedermeyer up high. Justin Penner was also in the vicinity. And judging by the reaction, watch the reaction by Chris Pronger. You know, just before that, he delivers a fist pump. And I was thinking the other day, looks a lot like Tiger Woods when he makes a key putt. The right-handed fist pump from Pronger. Well, Pronger assisted on both Anaheim goals in game three. And he has his first of the playoffs at 6-0. Johnny, and Lemaire comes right back with Bugard. And to me, he is rolling the dice. Because every time Bugard's out there, you know the referees are going to play uh, special attention to him. He's already throwing a knee, and they're aware of that. Lemaire was asked earlier in the series if he thought the officials would pay close attention to Bugard in this series, and he said they have all year. So, yeah, I knew they would. Shannon rims it around and out, and it got by Carney, so no icing. And the race is going to be won by Getzloff for the loose puck. May from behind the goal, steps in front, tries to stuff it at his stick deflected at the last moment. Boy, too bad he had Ryan Shannon right on the doorstep. And I don't think Brad May realized that it was Shannon directly in front of Nick Baxter. And I don't think he realized there was no one back to defend either one of them. Because Shannon was alone in front. And then May found himself alone in front when he stepped out from behind the goal. Much to the displeasure of 18,000 plus at the XL Energy Center. Chris Pronger has put the Ducks on top on the power play. Bob Wagner up there. You might see Francois Beauchemin 
in the background also keeping a close eye on the monitor. Nice seats in the suite here at the XL Center. And here's the goal from Pronger, and you know what? You could see there, Dustin Penner does the job in front of Nick Backstrom. Penner, impossible to move him out from in front of the net. So often, it's not only the shot, sometimes it's the pass, of course, when the traffic gets set up in front of the goal. Pronger's first goal of the playoffs for the Ducks so far. I got a feeling there might be a few more of those. It came from Getzloff and Scott Niedermeyer on the power play, where Anaheim is now 4 of 13 in this series. Conversely, Minnesota is 1 of 16 on the power play, and they have surrendered a shorthanded goal. Walls races into the Anaheim zone, feeds it into the crease, deflected away by Huskins, who just got back. Mayu behind the net. Trying to get loose from McDonald. Gabrick chops it down low. It's Gabrick, Mayu, and Walls right now as Jacques Lemaire is really shuffling his line combinations, trying to find the tonic for their struggling offense as Walls gets yet another shot on goal and Brzezgalov makes yet another save. Well, Marion Gabrick is such a powerful skater and it's amazing how quickly he darts in the open. I'll stop it here, guys. And there's Gabrick and watch the way he pulls away and gets to the front of the net. That long stride, one or two quick powerful bursts and he is away from his defender. And that's what the Wild have been, have been hoping to see more of in this series. And it is also what Anaheim has been able to neutralize. Sammy Paulson steps in to take the draw. Paulson has taken over 50% of the faceoffs for the Ducks in the last two games. We've seen with regularity. Randy Carlisle will put him out there for a draw and as soon as the faceoff is over and he can change, he'll make that change. Sammy took 60% of the draws in game three. And he's upended at the blue line as Pronger intercepts and moves it back the other way. Perry across for Getzloff. Getzloff angling in, forced behind the goal. Gets it back in front. Shannon's shot is blocked. Well, Ryan Shannon's had a couple of opportunities in this game, Johnny, and you know a lot of that has to do with the speed of Ryan Shannon. He's able to jump into those holes. That time, you may have noticed he yelled a lot louder than he did when Brad May had the puck behind the net. The Ducks will open next season in London with a pair of games against the Kings. It'll be the first time the NHL has ever played a regular season game in Europe. And the organization is organizing a trip for fans to see the games live. Go to AnaheimDucks.com to register to receive fan trip information. Well, there's that last bid by Ryan Shannon. Goes hard to the net. It was a perfect strike delivered to him. Unfortunately, the puck got blocked on route to the goal. Incidentally, the assist on the power play goal to Scott Niedermeyer, his first point in this series. So now he has as many as his brother Rob. Funny to think about it, the Scott Niedermeyer first assist, Chris Pronger his first goal, and yet all the talk is about the dominance of Pronger and Niedermeyer through the first three games of the series. And of course, what we expect to be their heavy reliance for the Ducks on those two in this game here tonight. Huskins bumped by Demetra, but the loose puck swept to the corner by Sammy Pulse. And finally, for the first time in the series, Marion Gabbert double shifted, and oh boy, Ilya Brzezgalov got lucky. almost put one in on himself. He broke up the centering pass with the blade of his stick and had no idea where the puck was. It was laying right in front of him. When a goaltender uses his stick and puts it into the passing lane, there's always a risk that the puck can deflect off the heel of the stick and come back towards the goal. And this is what happens. Demetra throws it out in front, it's off the heel, and it goes back into his pads. And I gotta tell you, that is the most uncomfortable feeling in the world. And all you're hoping for is not to hear the cheer at this point, because you don't know exactly where it is. You can't move too much, or you might move it over the line, but there it is off the heel of the stick. Now it's in his equipment, and he's just hoping at this point. Paulson wins yet another faceoff. One-handed up by Pronger, and Rob Niedermeyer muscles it out of the zone. Bouchard brings it back in, gets an angle. Backhander, and the rebound played away by Pronger. Bouchard got inside position on Aaron Rome, but he didn't have much of an angle left to get the shot past. Brizgalov, now the puck exited the zone as Burns rockets it back in. It's offside. Brent Burns has been hanging in and hanging in a little bit longer 
the offensive blue line again trying to create more opportunities but one of the players that has stood out for me from a Minnesota perspective has been Bouchard in this game he's been a little bit more dangerous than we saw him through the first three games of the series in fact that was his first shot on goal of the series well the you know what and, and people will always talk about Bouchard and, and you consider him a playmaker first before an actual goal scorer but uh, sometimes when teams are taking away his passing options, he's got to start throwing it into the crease himself. Well, he is one of the five 20-goal scorers on the Minnesota roster from this regular season. Andy McDonald working with Solani, speaking of 20-goal scorers, unable to get the pass back to Tamu. The puck cleared away, and McDonald will hinge it all the way back for Sean O'Donnell. Nearing the halfway mark of the hockey game, the Ducks on top of Minnesota, one to nothing. McDonald redirects it in off of Brent Burns, right on the Minnesota net. Yeah, Brent Burns touched that puck, and a little bit fortunate, perhaps, that the goaltender Backstrom had not exited the crease to try and play the dump in. Burns starts out of his own zone, spent the better part of his first few years in the NHL playing forward. <laughs> Now Parrish wins the puck from O'Donnell and plays it back to the line. Skula crossing the zone, high slot, Hall over top of the goal. Boy, a golden opportunity there for Adam Hall, and he missed the mark. O'Donnell out this time with Aaron Rome, and Rome moves it ahead. Perry gets it in. Perry has position on Skula as they go to the corner after it. Skula bumps it loose. Penner and Getzloff unable to keep it alive down low. Back come the Wild, three abreast through center. Gabbert pulls up for Ralston. Big save, Brzezgalov! What a stop by Ilya Brzezgalov. And we got a penalty coming up here against Anaheim. But the story of this game has been the excellence of Ilya Brzezgalov because the Wild all of a sudden are starting to get some glorious scoring opportunities. But the Anaheim netminder is holding the lead for the Ducks. upset with himself because he stopped skating on that last play. It was a three on two, but Getzloff was well positioned. But Brian Ralston got a step on him, got a glorious scoring opportunity by just jumping into the open hole. And that's, you know, that's the cardinal rule when you are back checking is that you stay with that player, keep your legs moving all the way back to your own goal line if necessary. Second power play of the game for Minnesota as a result. That's exactly why they are 0 for 1 tonight. And just one shot on goal of their previous man advantage. So they come to their feet and wave their towels at the XL Energy Center. Trying to get their club back in the game. And a goal would tie it. Anaheim wins the draw. Who else? Sammy Paulson. And O'Donnell sends it away. Well, Paulson's been real good in the faceoff circle in this game. Especially in this second period where the changes are so much more difficult. Now O'Donnell kicking at it along the corner boards. It comes loose to Parrish. His shot blocked by Scott Niedermeyer. Back to the corner. They muck for it. It's knocked loose and trickles out of the zone. Rob Niedermeyer racing after it. Jumps around Ralston and will pressure Numelin. Goes to the bench for a change. Numelin's pass redirected and it's center ice. The Ducks will restart. Now. Mullen just deflects it all the way back. Haven't seen much of Newmullen here in the second period. He led the Wild in ice time in game one. 
but primarily inserted into the lineup to try to help their struggling power play. And here's Kunitz now going to pressure him as the Ducks press the issue shorthanded. Kunitz shot blocked by Newman. Lays in the crease. Oh, and nearly able to get back to it was Kunitz. And you know that's part of the Anaheim game plan. They will pressure Newman when he is out there on the power play. His strength is as an offensive defenseman. He's just a little guy. And the Ducks feel like they can take advantage of that lack of size of Newman. Bouchard bumps as he dumps it in, and it's recovered by Hall. Rim back around. Janssen slides it across. Burns lets it go wide on the short side. Battling for the rebound. Bouchard keeps it alive. Half a minute to go on the power play. Rob Niedermeyer drops down and bumps Bayou, freeing the puck up, and O'Donnell ices it. Yeah, it's a big clear, and you see Nick Backstrom trying to keep that puck alive to make it tough for the Ducks to change, and he does. The penalty, penalty killers can't get off. Johnson's pass ramped in by Radovojevic. Sammy Paulson clears on the backhand, and that'll pretty much do it. Getzloff's penalty has just five seconds remaining, and Solani's going to force Backstrom to leave that puck deep in the zone. Yeah, good decision by Backstrom, who thought about trying to make a play with that puck, but Solani was in the middle of the ice. Now Tamu strips it from Burns, gets it to McDonald. The backhand, a big save by Backstrom. Rebound loose in the slot, and finally tracked down by Solani. Depenta with a one-timer that missed everything. Up the boards, Rome pinches down low for McDonald. And he tries to spin away from Burns. The penalty to Getzloff over. Again to the line. Rome shot off a couple of legs. Andy McDonald, oh, headed back in the crease behind Backstrom. But it's fished out by Janssen. Oh, what a break for Nick Backstrom. Looked like Andy McDonald was so close to a wide open net. He could not slide it into the cage, however. And Backstrom showed pretty good athleticism getting back into the play. The Wild had no shots on goal on that last power play. White gets a shot on goal, and that's off the high glass as Brzezgalov kicks it away, but Parrish gets to the carom. Mark Parrish trying to stuff it on a sharp angle. Holding the post was Brzezgalov, and the rebound cleared away. You know, Parrish has been really aggressive in terms of trying to jam pucks in from the corner. What a second period this has been. The pace absolutely sky high and great scoring chances at both ends icing will be the call here as huskins beats adam hall to the loose puck just 604 remaining in the second period and backstrom had a couple precarious moments just a few ago there were scrambly tight plays that bounced off feet and legs and there's the open net for andy mcdonald you saw he was just off balance but backstrom soccer goalie style comes diving across the goal crease here and just manages to get his elbow i think on that puck otherwise the ducks have got a two nothing lead in this game but what a sensational save by backstrom face-off win this time by ryan shannon in the offensive zone and may from behind the net tried to stuff it in front it went off a minnesota defender and right through the crease now Parrish driving up the left wing sends it in deep Conner goes back and fends his man off, but I think he's going to be called for holding. Nope, it's interference. Nonetheless, Minnesota will go to the power play once more when we return. 5.45 left in the second period. Chris Pronger and the Ducks lead Minnesota in St. Paul by a score of one another. to survive this second period. Minnesota is pouring it on the last little while. Chris Pronger just got nailed with an interference penalty. See him get one hand up in the chest of White. White's trying to get to the loose puck. 
What Pronger was trying to do was to buy some time for his partner or Donald to field that puck cleanly, but he got caught. It's an interference minor against him, and so Minnesota, which has been getting a bunch of good scoring chances in this second period, get another power play bit. Scott Niedermeyer out on the penalty kill. With O'Donnell defensively, Sammy Paulson and Rob Niedermeyer up front. What a story this penalty kill has been for the Ducks. They've only allowed one power play goal against now in their last eight games. Burns on the left point, swings it around in behind the goal. O'Donnell turns and angles it off the boards all the way back. Backstrom very active to try to move it up, and Ralston is there to get it. Brian Ralston for Burns, who will rim it around and in. On the weak side, Niedermeyer got to it. He deflects it through, and skating back the other way is Getzloff. Two on two, shorthanded with Moen. Moen tries to get it back to Getzloff. He does recover in the corner. And now he'll rag it back for Huskins, and the Ducks will work a little clock. Scott Niedermeyer, careful, and then Moen backhands it the rest of the way. And already 50 seconds gone in the pronger interference mine. Ralston plays it off the boards to himself. Sammy Paulson beat him to it in the corner. Parrish bumps him. Scott Niedermeyer moves it along. Huskins hammers it the rest of the way. I always get nervous when those defensemen hammer a rolling puck in the defensive zone when they're always shorthanded. It rolls on you. Sometimes they'll hammer it right over top of the board. A little miscommunication for the Minnesota power play allows Rob Niedermeyer to get up in the face of Kim Janssen and the natives getting restless at the XL Energy Center. Newman dumps it in. Brzgalov able to handle it at the side of the goal. Scott Niedermeyer rims it around. Janssen activates from the point, kept it alive. Niedermeyer got it once more and ices the puck. There's just no such thing as an easy entry for the Wild when they're on the power play. They can't skate it across the line. And this isn't a team that necessarily wants to dump it in. They, this is a speed team, not a big team. It's tough for them to get to those puck recovers. Scott Niedermeyer tried to clear up the middle, was blocked by Burns, but Getzloff got to it and sends it the rest of the way. And now they're just flat out booing. Bugard's not on the ice. The penalty to Pronger is over. The Ducks are full strength. And again, for the second consecutive power play, Minnesota does not get a shot on goal. They've had three power plays. They have just one shot on goal. Adavojevic digs it free from behind the net. School is shot. Blocked by Getzloff. Picked up by Solani. He's off to the races. On left wing, the stutter step. Now hits the brakes in the corner. Turns away from Carney. Dug out of his feet and cleared away by Radovojevic. Yeah, well defended by Keith Carney. I think he's seen those stutter steps a few times in practice from Temu Solani. McDonald gets it to Solani. Back into the Minnesota zone. Backhands it ahead for Kunitz. Keeps it deep, McDonald behind the net. Using his body as a shield, still has the puck in the near corner. Now cycles it back for Solani. Good work there by McDonald, who had a man all over him. Now Solani pulls away from Skula. Tamer, ever patient. Back behind the net for McDonald. Takes the bump from Walls, still has the puck. Turns it back and can't draw the penalty on Walls. And the Wild able to clear to center. Gabrick one on one, and he cannot get through Pronger. Minnesota was changing. Ooh, they got lucky there. Well, you, you might beat the stick of Chris Pronger every once in a while, but as we've seen with Pronger, you know, what's, I think, a lot often overrated with him is how well he uses his feet to defend. Corey Perry trying to get to a bouncing puck at center ice. Couldn't. The Wild in transition. Sent in off the stick of Aaron Rome. Bugard bearing down on him, crunches him in the corner. Rome still has it and escapes. Looks over his shoulder for a passing option. It's worked free. White steps out in front and fired it across the top of the crease. Schultz activates from the left point for Bugard behind the net. Bugard turns it back to the line. Bouchard shot blocked. He gets another chance and scores! Blocked, but it comes right back to him 
and he hammers the second one. And I think that puck goes right through the feet of Ryan Getzlaff off the post and in. It took a perfect shot to beat Ilya Brzgalov. Well, Bouchard shot there. In fact, he shot twice. And he has tied the game and given this building every bit of its name, energy, and then some. The goal at 18.03 of the second period. And we're tied at one. Walls for Minnesota offside, and I don't think anybody in the building heard the whistle. The only people that heard it were the people on the ice. They love the fact that Bugard got an assist. Schultz got the other. And the Wild have even this game at one. Kamu Solani having a little discussion, trying to plant a seed, perhaps, in the mind of referee Paul Dvorsky. Loose puck in the Minnesota zone, tracked down by Janssen, who tips it along for his partner, Schultz. Scott Niedermeyer steps into Bayou and takes it away. Throws it towards the net, and it deflects right up to the glove of Backstrom, who holds on. There you see that rover ability of Scott Niedermeyer that Randy Carlisle is always talking about. He makes things happen because he gets into situations or spots on the ice where few other people would dare venture. He can do it because of the skating ability that he has. He wandered all the way down into the corner that time. And that's in the first shift immediately following a goal. Boy, there's a lot of defensemen in the league wouldn't even think about trying something like that. Face off to the left of Backstrom, who has faced 19 shots to this point. Rob Niedermeyer throws it wide on the short side. Paulson on the right wing boards. Now plays it to the corner for Travis Mullen. Mullen behind the net for Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer had the game winner in game three. Tries to turn away from Burns, has the reach, and then has a samurai swatted off his stick by Backstrom, the goaltender. Back comes Ross, who sends it into the Anaheim zone, and Dimitra tried to throw it towards the net, blocked by O'Donnell. Gabbert comes over to the near side, and it's deflected out by Moen, and we get a whistle, a penalty coming up to the wild. Yeah, and I think this is going to go against Marion Gabbert, and it's could be interference, the call on him. We'll, we'll wait for the referee. And it's going to be a hooking penalty. Dan O'Rourke's call is unpopular with under a minute remaining here in the second period. Well, Gabrick was away from the puck, and he got a stick into the midsection of one of the Anaheim defenders trying to allow his teammate to get to a loose puck, and it's going to cost him. See if we can pick it up. There's the hook right there on Gabrick on Sammy Paulson, and it is going to cost him a couple of minutes here, so that's a good break for the Ducks, because this place was going crazy, the Wild trying to generate something on the attack. 45 seconds to go in the period as the play goes into the Minnesota zone, and Schultz can't clear, Kunitz held it in. Schultz to the corner, and his pass up and will be brought back by Walls. Walls and Bayou shorthanded, and Bayou drifts it high over top of the Anaheim goal. Pronger kicks it free. Now 25 seconds in the period as Kunitz speeds through center. Into the zone, an ill-advised drop pass that is just cleared by Burns. If he'd have been able to possess that, excuse me, it was Koivu, could have been two on one the other way. Now Kunitz carries in up the left side, winds up a stick save made by Backstrom to the corner. Five seconds in the period as it's thrown to the point that came outside the line. Pronger fires it back in and around. That's going to do it for the period. And the Ducks will carry over power play time when the third period begins. A very crucial minute 12 with the extra man to begin the third period. I think Anaheim will be satisfied that they go into the third period needing only to score one more goal than the Wild do in order to win this series. Because, uh, boy, the Wild seem to be pouring it on. But let's not forget about some of the scoring chances that the Ducks had in that second period. I mean, Nicholas Backstrom absolutely robbed Andy McDonald, or the Ducks would have had a two-goal lead in this game. So, Ducks are well positioned. All of the pressure heading into the final 20 minutes is on Minnesota. And as we know, sometimes when people are under pressure, they make big mistakes. 
Well, it has been a little more wide open than the last couple of games in this series. The teams have combined for 45 shots on goal through the first 40 minutes of play. But, Brian, it's as simple as this for the Ducks. Win a period, win a series. And they would love to get this over with. I mean, they're, they're banged up a little bit, as all teams are at this stage. They know that Francois Beauchemin could not play in this game. They'd love to be able to buy some time before they find out who their next opponent would be. But it's not going to be easy. All the scoring in the hockey game coming in the second period. Tied at one in Minnesota after two. Playing an atmosphere in a, in a city like Minneapolis, especially growing up here, helps a little bit too. But after playing in places like uh, Florida, LA, and New York, where the hockey's not too big of a deal, I tell you what, it's it's amazing. And uh, like I said, it's a dream come true. Talk to us a little bit about the aggressive offensive posture your team has taken so far in this game. I know goals have been hard to come by, but boy, you're attacking that goal crease tonight. Uh, you know, the D have been playing so well and making it so tough to get anything just at the goalie, let alone by the goalie. And we knew we just got to throw everything we can at them. You know, there's nothing to lose. There's no tomorrow for us if we don't show up tonight. So, you know, we're just trying to get as much as we can at the net and get some rebounds, some ugly ones, a couple off a stick. And, uh, you know, some go in kind of like Bouchard's. They went off, uh, I think, Pronger's stick there. In a situation like this where you really have nothing to, to lose, is it more pressure or is it less pressure? You know, it's almost kind of less pressure. You kind of go out there a little bit relaxed. Uh, you know, all the pressure's on Anaheim right now. They're up 3 nothing. It's their job to close it. We got, like I said, we got nothing to lose, so we just throw everything at them and, you know, hope some of it goes in. Mark, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks, guys. That's Mark Parrish. Last season, he had 16 power play goals splitting the year between the Islanders and the Los Angeles Kings. He and his Wild tied with the Ducks at one. Through two periods of play, the Minnesota Wild and Anaheim Ducks tied at one. John Ollers and Brian Hayward back with you, and we're joined downstairs by the Wilds, Mark Parrish. And Mark, uh, from Adina, Minnesota, you played a couple of years of college hockey at St. Cloud. How special is it for you to play here in what they call the state of hockey once again? Uh, it, it's a dream come true. You know, to play in an atmosphere in a, in a city like Minneapolis, especially growing up here, helps a little bit too. But after playing in places like uh, Florida, L.A., and New York, where the hockey's not too big of a deal, I tell you what, it's, it's amazing. And uh, like I said, it's a dream come true. Talk to us a little bit about the aggressive offensive posture your team has taken so far in this game. I know goals have been hard to come by, but boy, you're attacking that goal crease tonight. Uh, you know, the D have been playing so well and making it so tough to get anything just at the goalie, let alone by the goalie. And we knew we just got to throw everything we can at them. You know, there's nothing to lose. There's no tomorrow for us if we don't show up tonight. So, you know, we're just trying to get as much as we can at the net and get some rebounds, some ugly ones, a couple off a stick. And, uh, you know, some go in kind of like Bouchard's. They went off, uh, I think, Pronger's stick there. In a situation like this where you really have nothing to, to lose, is it more pressure or is it less pressure? You know, it's almost kind of less pressure. You kind of go out there a little bit relaxed. Uh, you know, all the pressure's on Anaheim right now. They're up 3 nothing. It's their job to close it. We got, like I said, we got nothing to lose, so we just throw everything at them and, you know, hope some of it goes in. Mark, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks, guys. That's Mark Parrish. Last season, he had 16 power play goals splitting the year between the Islanders and the Los Angeles Kings. He and his Wild tied with the Ducks at one.
can win the third period here in Minnesota. They'll be the first team in this year's Stanley Cup tournament to move on to the second round, tied at one after two periods of play here in St. Paul in game four. It is such a special time of year, the Stanley Cup playoffs. You have to win four series. You have to win 16 games. But a little earlier this season, we had a chance to sit down with a number of the members of the Anaheim Ducks and find out their first recollections ever of hearing of that trophy called Lord Stanley's. It was, uh, I went to a hockey school, actually, back when I was really young, back in uh, Rua Naranda. And there, the Stanley Cup actually showed up at the hockey school, and I got a picture taken with it, and you know I got to see it. So that was probably you know my first memory as a as a child growing up. I remember a little bit back when uh, the Oilers were really good, and and watching them all the time, and and those kind of series that they played in, and how much of a battle those things were. I think it was when Yari Curry and the Edmonton Oilers when they had their glory days in the 80s. Um, I was watching the games in the finals when they raised the cup and Yari Curry was holding it. Probably that time I saw that the first time. It was in a Adam hockey tournament in uh, Winnipeg in the Stanley Cup I think was being paraded around Canada and it just happened to be in the ball that day and a bunch of us got our picture with it so it was kind of cool. Did you touch it? Unfortunately by accident I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first I really remember is that when the Islanders were winning in the early 80s um, and then after that the Oilers took over and, and started their dynasty of winning Stanley Cup. So uh, pretty fortunate to be able to see two great hockey clubs like that um, put the, the uh, string of Stanley Cups like they did together. When you're young you go out in the frozen ponds and, and you pretend you're playing for game seven in the Stanley Cup and, and I think the first time I was able to see it was, it was uh, when Scott won it with uh, New Jersey the first time and he had it for a day, I think that was a pretty special time and when he realized his dream and, and I was able to see it up close and personal like that. You know, as a kid, uh, you really don't uh, realize what a, tough, what a tough thing it is to accomplish that. You just, you know, you dream of it and, you know, playing street hockey about, you know, you might be the one that, to raise a cup of, above your head and, and then uh, to actually be in the NHL and, real, you know, Realize that you know you got an 82-game schedule and then go through playoffs. It's it's pretty rewarding, I think. For me, it was the salad days of the Winnipeg Jets when I was just a wee tot, watching Brian Hayward and the rest of the Jets battle it out with the Edmonton Oilers. Of course, I was so very very young at that point in time. We're back in a moment.
close game all even at one through two periods of play at the XL Energy Center game four with the Ducks on top three games and on John and Brian back with you. The score doesn't reflect it but this game has felt a little more wide open. Well that second period in particular was absolutely wide open both goaltenders had to be sensational in fact Yuli Brzgalov played probably his best period fights off the initial shot by Mark Parrish. Miko Koivu had a point blank chance. He got the blocker on that one. That was a great stop. Sammy Paulson long range shot against Nicholas Backstrom. Look how aggressively he defends that goal crease and then the Ducks move it around get it back to Chris Pronger. There's the Tiger Woods fist bump that I was talking about right there. He blasted Dustin Penner by the way with the screen in front. Nervous moment for Brzgalov was off the heel of his stick but does stay out. Marion Gabrick to Brian Ralston. Another big save by the Anaheim netminder and then the Ducks shifted down low. Andy McDonald thought he had a wide open net. But as you can see from our overhead, what a save. The elbow by Backstrom. The Wild would tie it up. Here Mark Richard shoots. The rebound hits a foot, comes right back to him, and he would drill the second opportunity in behind Brzgala. And look at the numbers after 40 minutes of play, and you can see, again, the power plays with the Ducks with the advantage, and, and that's critical, Brian, because the first 72 seconds of the third period, the Ducks are going to have the extra man. And, and it really is remarkable. We've talked a lot about the power play situations so far and how dominant Anaheim has been in extra man situations. They are able to get the puck into the zone and get the power play set up, and it looks to me like the Wild are confused how to stop that. I don't know if there is a way to stop it, because Niedermeyer and Pronger make those great decisions whenever they get across the center red line. Watch for that in, the, in this initial power play. If Anaheim gets set up on the power play, it's going to be all kinds of problems for Minnesota. You think the Wild going to continue to try to stuff it in from off the goal line and just have everybody go to the crease? I think Mark Paris said it all. They're, they are having so much difficulty getting any shots through that they've changed their game plan. They're going to throw it at the Anaheim net from everywhere, and they're looking for a bounce. They got a bounce on their only goal. Well, it should be very interesting. As we said earlier, the Ducks win a period. They win a series. Looking ahead to next season, the Ducks will begin the season across the pond, frozen or not. The 07-08 regular season begins in London, England, with a pair of games against the L.A. Kings, the first time the league has ever played a regular season game in Europe. The Ducks are organizing trips to go to London. If you'd like more information, check out AnaheimDucks.com. The third period from St. Paul is next. TV presents Anaheim Ducks Hockey. Brought to you by Honda, the power of dreams. By Mountain Dew. And by Miller Lite. Good call.
zooming inside the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota, the state capital. Where the Wild need to win a period to stay alive in the series, the Ducks need to win a period to advance to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, they the will begin the period, excuse me, Brian, on the power play. Well, the Ducks said going into this game that they would be relaxed, but they would continue to play the exact same way that they played in the first three games. And they were going to put the onus, the responsibility, and the burden on the shoulders of the Wilds to really try and change their game plan. And I think we've seen that for the most part in this game. Minnesota has changed in the sense that they're known as an open ice team and a skating transition team that counterattacks so well. They haven't been able to do that at all in the series. Now they've turned into a team that shoots from everywhere. That slot gets it to Solani with speed. Behind the goal, got it to Pronger and his shot deflected over top. Getzloff trying to get it back to the point and Niedermeyer holds the line. Behind the net, Penner reverses it back, Solani has it. Once more to Penner on the goal line. Back for Tamu behind the net. Side to side they go. Right point Scott Niedermeyer, left point Pronger touches it for Getzloff. Half a minute in the power play, Getzloff takes a look. Backs it out. Now winds up redirected just wide by Solani who gets the rebound himself. Yeah, that high tip play, very effective for the Ducks. Solani looks, doesn't have a passing lane. Gets locked. The Pronger, one timer. Big rebound went right into the midsection of Scott Niedermeyer and he couldn't get a shot away. To the line, Pronger will glove it down and hold it in. Sneaks it to Niedermeyer. Down low. Penner. Drops out to the hash mark, now to the line, Pronger, the penalty just about over, his shot deflected by Solani to the corner. Gabarik out of the box, Minnesota full strength. Two shots on goal on that power play, Solani drives to the middle, had his shot blocked, and they got a stick on it once more. Huge penalty kill for the Minnesota Wild, but boy, the Ducks again, lots of time in the offensive zone, and they had a couple of plays set up that they missed on, but did not miss by much. Here's Gabarik out of the corner with it. Converged upon by a pair of defenders, including Sammy Paulson, who got upended but was able to clear the zone. Oh, boy, Marion Gabarik looked like he may have got away with one there as he caught the skate of Sammy Paulson. Demetra battling Moen, got it into the zone. Ralston drops it back. Gabarik, club save! Ilya Brzezgala! Oh, what a stop by Brzezgala. Turnover in the Anaheim defensive zone, and that is something we have not said very often in this series. But the Wild keep a loose puck alive right there. Bouncing puck. Ralston taps it over. And a big left-hand glove save by Brzezgalov. Gabrick, boy, he gets that puck away in a hurry, doesn't he? He got a lot on this snapshot. What a save. That puck was ticketed for the top corner. The Anaheim netminder came up huge. Sean O'Donnell commenting earlier in the series that he said he thought Gabrick got the shot away as quickly as Joe Sackett. And a penalty coming up for the Ducks after Newman's shot got through. And a holding call will give Minnesota their fourth power play chance of the game. Now this one is going to go against Kent Huskins. And, and the key here is how quickly Newman is able to get that shot away from the blue line. See if we can pick it up. There's Kent Huskins. It's Bugard that he's dealing with. I don't see the hold, quite honestly. I do not see the hold on Ken Huskins. Well, neither did Randy Carlisle, who was barking at Dan O'Rourke, the referee. Nonetheless, the duck penalty kill on the spot again. Off the half wall, Gabrick down low, right into the crease of the pass went off of Brizgala. Newmelin holds it in. Dances all the way to the goal line and then back. Ralston for Newmelin. They overload the left side of the zone. His shot blocked by Pronger. Went right to Dimitri. Passes it across. Gloved off by Brzgalov. You know, it's it's a, just a real nice play by Ilya Brzgalov. Uh, when the puck is set up on the blocker side of the goaltender on a power play, he uses not only his stick, but his catching glove to shut down a, a passing lane. Look at that glove. Perfectly positioned over top of the goal stick. It makes it very difficult. From the reverse angle, you see it perfectly. Nice play by Ilya Brzgala. Paulson wins the draw. Pronger clears the zone. Half a minute gone in the penalty to Huskins. Newmelin picks it up for Minnesota. Hands it off to Bouchard. He has Minnesota's only goal of the game and feeds it in. Adam Hall pressuring Pronger. Pronger rims it around, but Newmelin there on the hash mark to hold it in. 
all behind the goal. Has it dislodged. Rob Niedermeyer drops down. Nice little play. Got it to O'Donnell. Pronger will ice it. You know, when the Ducks defenders sense that the Wild have it on the backhand side or it's in their skates near the boards, that is when they pounce in pressure. They don't pressure all the time. Gabrick sends it in. Gets locked. Chips it along. Owen turns. He and Burns do battle. Burns kicks it down low for Gabbert. Gabbert picked up on the near side by Scott Niedermeyer. Puck jammed into the crease. They score! position on the Anaheim defender and both Ralston and Gabrick are just chopping away at a loose puck and I think it's going to be Gabrick's goal from the reverse angle we'll see it Brzgalov can't hold his balance against the short side post and the Wild take a lead For Marion Gabrick, if it's his goal, it'll be his second of the game. Meantime, Ilya Brzgalov trying to bring the attention of the officials that his stick is broken. Lonnie Cameron, the linesman, comes over and collects it from him. Scoring for and he will return a new one to the Anaheim goaltender. Marion Gabrick, his second goal of the playoffs. And the Wilds take a lead in this game, and now that changes everything. Now it's Anaheim that has to play from behind, and they have to start activating their defense. McDonald steams in, gets his own pass after it was deflected away from Solani to the high slot, out of the reach of Huskins, who will not hold it in. And the Ducks touch up. Minnesota with their first lead of the hockey game, 2-1. to one. Their first lead since 1-0 in game one. Scott Niedermeyer's pass helped out of the zone by McDonald. Corey Perry takes the rink wide feet from Penner. A high wrist shot and a rebound to the slot. Penner knifing at it, couldn't get his stick on it. Ralston gets to the loose puck and hammers one out of play. Off the stick of Sean O'Donnell. So this faceoff will be just inside the Anaheim blue line. Linesman's taking the puck to the top of the faceoff circle. There's the bid by Corey Perry. And Nicholas Baxter leaves a bad rebound. He doesn't know where the puck is. You can see him looking around for it. Great look from our super slow mo camera. And a nice job by Martin Skula to clear the area in front of the Minnesota goal crease. Gets lot to oppose, oppose Koivu, who wins the draw, but it hops the stick of Skula, who will be pressured by Perry. Trying to chip it in was Adam Hall, who got upended. The play is offside, but the Ducks clear the zone. Getzloff can't nudge it past Carney. Carney now pressured by Penner. Ducks changing defensively, getting behind the defense. Parrish, and his shot just missed. Penner kicks it up and heads up the left side. Moves to the middle. Joined on the rush by Perry. He thought Perry was going to pick it up, so he let it go. And the Wild turn back. Parrish gets center red. Now they want to get a change. Aaron Rome turns with it along with DePenta. DePenta nudges it ahead. Paulson has a drop out of his equipment. Rob Niedermeyer forces it in and mowing along the boards, working on the much smaller Newman. Gabrick picks up the loose puck and turns on the Jets with Dimitra. Newman brings it in on left wing, drops it back. Ralston fires wide. It'll come around and waiting at the point Janssen, but it didn't get to him. Moen has Rob Niedermeyer and can't get the pass through Dimitra. It's out of play. More space in the neutral zone in this game than we have seen for the entire series. From a wild perspective, Mark Parrish gets some open ice, and boy, he does not miss that top corner by much. 
Look at the space for Parrish. The Ducks were changing their defense. I believe it was Joe DePenta that seemed to fall as he got off the Anaheim bench and he was not able to put a lot of pressure against the Minnesota Wild captain. Ducks change quickly off the faceoff. May comes out. And a bouncing puck knocked down by Huskin. Hit the linesman, Rassico. And now the Wild dump it back in. Scott Niedermeyer turns it up the boards. Wall sent it towards the net, redirected, and Brzezgalov makes a good save as Bayou was there to get a piece of it. Yeah, and, and this is something that we've seen a lot from, from Minnesota. And boy, is this crowd in this game now. And that is a simple play, throwing from a severe angle, forcing the goalie not only to make the save, but to make sure he does something with the rebound. 14.04 to go, third period. Minnesota 2, the Ducks 1. The series, three games to none in favor of Anaheim. Paulson wins the draw. Bouchard and Huskins battle for it, and Paulson able to get it ahead now for Mullen. Mullen joined on the rush, will angle it off the boards for Rob Niedermeyer, and Newman stepped in front of him and got away with a potential interference. Yeah, he sure did. White jumps into the rush, two on one, and the rebound was there for Parrish, and he was taken out of the play at the moment of truth. Back come the Ducks, Mullen and Niedermeyer joined by Scott Niedermeyer, and Mullen redirects a pass right on. Up and down we go in a state where they played plenty of pond hockey. It looks a little bit like pond hockey. Well, the Ducks now trailing in the game. They're not so opposed to that at this point. There's still plenty of time left, but you know, if the Wild are, are willing to play an open game at this point, I think it would be a mistake. They've got the lead. Solani drove it off the right boards right on, and again, a juicy rebound off of Baxter. Now Kunitz shot redirected by Solani, and a dandy save by the Minnesota netminder. Gabrick pressuring Pronger for the loose puck back in the Anaheim zone, trying to turn away from it. They come to their feet in St. Paul. Ralston gets it back from Gabrick, picked up by Kunitz. They brandish sticks, and Kunitz drops it back for Pronger, ahead to Andy McDonald. He lifts it all the way back. This will be an icing call against the Ducks, and it is, so we will step aside. It's getting loud in St. Paul at the XL Energy Center because Marion Gabrick has given the Wild a 2-1 to one lead. bench. Chris Kunitz took a shot and watched Solani in the middle of the ice in front of Backstrom. He redirects this puck off the shaft of the stick. Backstrom not only makes the stop but is able to tap the rebound past Tamo Solani because Solani was perfectly positioned. That was a rare turnover by Marion Gabrick in the Minnesota Wild but huge stop by Nicholas Backstrom. Sometimes you know there's an element of luck involved in this but Backstrom technically does a very good job of closing up all the holes through him. Arms tucked in tight to the body. Those pads, of course, my pet peeve, completely <laughs> seal up the five hole whenever he falls down. So if you don't hit a corner, very unlikely that pucks will go through a goaltender that plays the style that Backstrom plays. Did you get your name on all your gear back in the day? Did you have your pads? Oh, yeah. And they all said Hayward. Oh, yeah. That's that's being an NHLer, Johnny. That's a big deal when you start to get your name on your pads. 
You don't get that in the American League. Solani into the Minnesota zone. Drops it back to the line, and Rome unable to get there in time. Offside as it came outside the strike. And it's even worse news if they misspell your name. <laughs> that didn't happen to me, but I've heard it happen to some guys before. Well, they've misspelled a couple names on the Stanley Cup in the last few years. Manny Legacy, most recently when he was with the Red Wings. That's the ultimate disrespect, I would think. Two to one, Minnesota, 12 20 to go. Third period. Wes Wall, who's been dynamite in this game, half a dozen shots on goal through the first two periods. Now we're seeing more of the Solani, Kunitz, and McDonald line for Randy Carlisle as club needs a goal. Icing will be the call here against the Wild, bringing the face off all the way back into the Minnesota zone and even 12 minutes to go. And we'll see Randy Carlisle now change up the troops. And primarily what he's thinking about doing here is he's still matching at this point in the game. Wes Waltz is the centerman for the Minnesota Wild that plays every single time McDonald and Solani are on the ice. And what he'd like to be able to do here is even if this line doesn't score, if they control the puck, Wes Waltz has to stay on the ice. He can't change. Then he'll follow right back with McDonald and Solani against a matchup that Jacques Lemaire doesn't really want. Ducks able to keep Minnesota bottled up for a while, but as it's dumped back in, Perry got upended, and he is slow to get back up. Minnesota able to get the change as the puck came out center. Now Rome has to turn and plays it. Penner circles back. Nice pass up the right side for Getzloff into the zone. He goes wide and has his shot stick to the back glass by Baxter. Came right back to the side of the goal. Anaheim was changing defensively, so it's rimmed around and out. Stronger back with O'Donnell in the Anaheim zone. O'Donnell throws it to the middle of the ice, an area pass that Perry couldn't track down. Skula now hinges it back for Carney, who angles it ahead. Bouchard turns back with it now into the Anaheim zone. Pierre Marc Bouchard got it ahead for Demetra, and he couldn't pull the trigger. It was a rolling puck. Yeah, nice back checking play by Tim Solani, who stayed right with Demetra. McDonald drives up the right side, hits the brakes, back for Pronger, snapshot, oh, just missed. And I don't think Backstrom saw that shot by Pronger. Ralston speeds up the right side, drops it back. Cutting across the slot, Demetra to Ralston, who slams it home. about Bouchard and Ralston being quiet in this series. They haven't been quiet in this one. Chris Pronger comes so close to tying this game up. Misses by about six inches. And there you see the speed in the open ice of Ralston. The Ducks were in good position, but Ralston was able to get away from the Anaheim defense and make his stick available. And what a nice pass that was from a severe angle. Ralston slams it home, but the play was made by Demetra. And just like that, Minnesota takes a two-goal lead in game four. White broke his stick off the ensuing faceoff. Bugard falls and knocks the net off behind Brzezgala. Meantime, Huston speeds the other way. Scott Niedemeyer from an angle. It's underneath Backstrom, and he gets the whistle. Everybody looking to see whether that puck was under Backstrom and in the net. Well, the Ducks were allowed to, it's called a continuation play. Their net was knocked off the moorings, but because they had the puck and were on the attack and it was knocked off by a Minnesota player, the referees allowed them to continue the rush. And that puck almost slid between the pads of Nicholas Backstrom. Niedermeyer shoots it, gets the puck to settle down, and Backstrom's trying to click those heels together. Do you see the puck drop? My goodness, he is fortunate. He does not knock that puck over the line behind him. And again, what we've seen throughout this series, Brian, his propensity to fall back into his net here. If that puck was underneath him, he could have just brought it with him. 
It was Bugard who came out on that shift and fell into the Anaheim net, knocking it off. And you can hear the, the wild faithful chanting Boogie as their fan favorite is on the ice and goes after a bouncing puck at the side of the goal. Well, that's got to be a penalty on Bugard. I mean, he's getting away with murder right now. He was tangled up with Scott Niedermeyer. Honestly, I mean, Bugard could get a penalty every shift that he's on the ice. And I'm surprised that they just did not give him one as he interfered with Scott Niedermeyer in behind the Anaheim goal line. Well, they are alive and well at the XL Energy Center. Brian Ralston has added to Minnesota's lead 3-1 wild. the Anaheim coaching staff at this point. 19,174, and they all love that guy. And they are making noise under 10 minutes to go into third in the wild. With the last three goals of the hockey game now lead it three to one. Koibu tries to glove it down for Bouchard, and Kunitz comes away with it, chipping it in on a cross-corner dump to the right side. That's got a good hit in on Skula as the Wild head the other way. Bouchard trying to get around Aaron Rome. Finds the trailer coming late. Parrish, and he had a rolling puck that he rifled off the chest of Brizgalov. Deflected in. Held in at the point by Koibu and then deflected in. And Getzloff going after Burns. In comes Perry. The crowd is going nuts and everybody else is pairing off. Well, Johnny, first let's talk about the goal by Parrish. Like I said early in the series, and Burns and Corey Perry are going at it here. They finally get loose from one another. You know, Brent Burns had never had a fight in the NHL before this series. He's at two now. He fought Kunitz, now he's fought Corey Perry. Becoming a habit. The Wild have broke this game open. Mark Parrish, one of the best I've ever seen at deflecting pucks. And this is, you know, for most players, you would have to say this is an unlikely deflection. But not for Mark Paris. Puck goes back to the point. The puck is shot. It's going about, oh, 15 feet wide. Watch the tip by Parrish on the left of your screen. He reaches behind his body and gets the shaft of the stick on it and pulls it back towards the goal. You'll see it really well from this angle. Here comes the point shot. Look at Parrish reach behind him. What a nifty little redirect. And not much chance for Ilya Brzgala. So 
So just about everybody we talked about that was on the Schneid in game three, Bouchard, Gabarit, Ralston, and now Parrish have scored goals. Officially off the Schneid. None of them had a shot on goal in game three with the exception of Mark Parrish. And Parrish didn't have a point in the series before tonight. Johnny, with a 4-1 lead, I, I would be remiss to let the fans at home know that there are select seats available for game number five, if need be, back in Anaheim. And if this score holds up for Minnesota, that's going to be some game. And we're going to get a goaltending change for Anaheim. You know what? This is a very, very smart play by Randy Carlisle. Uh, no fault of Ilya Brzgalov in this game. I mean, the Wild have, have played a sensational offensive game. Brzgalov had 32 saves to this point in the game. And for the first time in the postseason, we'll get a look at J.S. Jaguar. And Jiggy's going to enter the game, and he's going to have to face a Minnesota Wild power play right off the bat. Playoff career numbers for Jaguar, phenomenal. 1.95 goals against a 9.32 save percentage. The Ducks went into this postseason with the two top goaltenders in the NHL in terms of goals against and save percentage over the course of their career in the postseason. That is a nice luxury for Randy Carlisle to have. Well, Perry gets two for charging and five for fighting. Five for fighting is the call on Burns, so the additional two being served by Ryan Shannon go up on the board, and Minnesota goes back on the power play. Cross corner dump picked up by Gabbard. Turns it back and Demetra bumped into by Sammy Paulson. Comes to the slot and Scott Niedermeyer is there by his lonesome and he clears it away. Newman throws it up the right side and went through Gabbard. Kunitz is after it for the Ducks. Chopped away from Gabbert by Scott Niedermeyer. And he'll nudge it along from Owen. Kunitz races after the loose puck and pressures the issue shorthanded, trying to spin away from Ralston. Fired it in front off the stick of Backstrom. He had Moen going to the front of the goal. A good play again with the goal stick by the netminder Backstrom. Now it's Skula. Handing it off to Bouchard. Angles it in and Skula. Plays it around. Demetri gets it to the point. Johnson walks the line and gives it back to him. Shot right into Shaguer, who makes a right pad save. In comes Janssen. Back at the point, Todd White. Across for Skula. Radovojevic standing at the top of the Anaheim crease and the pass in the high slot off the stick of White. He'll track it down on the near side and keep it alive for Kim Janssen. All the way across. Now this is Bouchard. Bouchard back for Skula. Skula winds up, score! They're saying no, Johnny. I think we might get a goalie interference penalty on this. Referee Paul Dvorsky immediately waved off this goal. And you might be the only man in the building who noticed. Minnesota player was standing in the crease, which I didn't know you weren't allowed to do anymore. Well, let's take a look. The shot goes through Jaya Shiger. It's Radovojevic that is stationed in front of the Anaheim netminder. Boy, I can't remember a goal being taken away without a goalie interference penalty being called. Jaguar trying to look around the screen set up by Radovojevic. And that's a break for the Anaheim Ducks. Jacques Lemaire can't believe it. 
I'm not sure they would have made that call in Buffalo, Brian. <laughs> Depenta for the Ducks will clear it away. Still a few seconds left. And 19,000 strong begin their chant of we disagree, we disagree. The penalty is over being served by Shannon. So for the record, a kill for the Ducks who are still down four to one. And now time's a-wasted. The clock becoming an ally for the Wild. Shannon pushes it to center. Brad May drives it into the glove of Baxter who plays it away himself. The Ducks changing defensively and Pronger gets it ahead. McDonald sends it in. After it goes Thornton. And the referee takes a tumble. Disappointing very few. It was O'Rourke who went down. Then Pronger. He got a high stick. With Wes Walls, and then Thornton took a run at Walls afterwards. It will be a high stick on Walls. Thornton chips it into the zone. Kunitz has McDonald. Kunitz tried to drag it around a sliding Carney and lost the handle. So 6.07 remaining here in the third period, and the Ducks have a power play, and they need a quick power play goal. If, if they're going to try and take a run at tying this game up. They got to score. They don't have the luxury of waiting, I don't think, to fatigue the penalty killing unit. They need to make quick bids on the wild goaltender. Now Walls will take a seat. He has had a strong game tonight, and of course, a big part of Minnesota's penalty killing unit. Nice sticking the call and the face off to the right of Backstrom. Minnesota goal tenders made 26 saves to this point as the puck off the side of his net. Comes around to Scott Niedermeyer. Pronger, who has the game's only goal for the Ducks on the power play in the second period, walks it to the middle. Gets it back from Getzlop, doesn't pull the trigger. Near circle, Scott Niedermeyer's shot drifts wide on the short side. Getzlop holds it in. Pronger gets it back from Niedermeyer. Getzlaff hammers a one-timer deflected by Penner in front, who recovers the rebound. You know what? That went off the shaft of the stick of the goaltender Backstrom. That was a very, very fortunate save indeed, because I think Getzlaff had that top corner picked. Shiger comes out to settle it as it's cleared, and Pronger circles the goal. A minute 10 in the Anaheim power play. Pronger throws it to the left corner. McDonald with speed will get there first. Drop back at Scott Niedermeyer, has it knocked away by Ralston, the two of them to the corner battle for it. Kick free by Rob Niedermeyer, and Pronger holds it in. It came to White in the slot, and he backhands it out. Under five to go, third period. 45 seconds in the Anaheim power play. McDonald can't reach it as it caroms away. And again, the Ducks forced to get on side. Aaron Rome out on the power play with Huskins now. As the Ducks trying to conserve a little ice time, I think at this point, Brian, for both Niedermeyer and Brown. Yeah, and uh, you know, the other thing that Randy Carlisle is going to be looking at here, if Francois Beauchemin can't play, which of the other three defensemen that he has in the lineup impresses him and perhaps will gain a little bit more ice time in game five? This penalty call is going to go against Chris Kunitz of the Ducks. Charging will be the call. Charging penalty against Kunitz. KDOC TV presents Anaheim Ducks Hockey. Brought to you by Pepsi. It's the Cola. By Honda, the power of dreams. And by Miller Lite. Good call. So the Ducks had 25 seconds remaining on the wall's high stick before Chris Kunitz goes off for charging here. Right, here's the run that Kunitz takes. It's against Stefan Veyu. Veyu has been probably the most physical player other than Derek Bugard in the wild lineup in this series. 
four on four for the next 10 seconds as Paulson fends off the defender and sends Moen ahead, but Scott Niedermeyer is deemed offside. Down to 4.13 to go, third period in Minnesota. The Ducks need some instant offense or there will be a game five back in Anaheim on Thursday. Just over four minutes to go, third period. And Minnesota now on the power play as the high sticking call to Walls has expired. They'll have the extra man for the next minute and a half as Pronger and Parrish had a little trouble getting untangled. And Chris Pronger took a run at Mark Parrish. Parrish, a lot of Minnesota players that you could point out for having exceptionally strong games tonight, but certainly Parrish would be in that group. Play in the Anaheim zone. Up to the front of the goal. And finally covered by Jaguar. Pronger and Gabrick have words. You know what's interesting about the remainder of this game now is what does Randy Carlisle do to his goaltending for the next game? Uh, it, it, you mentioned he's getting a look at the three other defensemen down the stretch with the ice time. I think he's getting a look at J.S. Jaguar as well. You, you like the timing of taking Brzezgalov out, but he's also going to see what he's got from Jaguar, who really hasn't played, Brian, in two weeks. Yeah, absolutely, and this is a valuable game time for Jiggy. There's the run that Chris Pronger took at Mark Parrish moments ago. Parrish got the sense that he sensed that Pronger was in the vicinity. He did a nice job getting away from that hit. Under a minute to go on the power play as Bouchard behind the net, fended off by Getzloff. Pronger moves it ahead, and Moen protects it long enough to clear the zone. This is the sixth power play of the game for the Wild. They have scored on the power play here tonight, marking the second consecutive game that they've done so. But they're just two for 20 in the series. Getzloff short-handed. Boy, a nice move to get around a couple defenders and then lost an edge as he tried to get back to the slot. Gabarit. Feeds it back in. Demetra pumping with Pronger. In comes Aaron Rome who plays it around. Skula swings it back down low. Radovojevic from behind the net. That one bounced off of the shins of Demetra. Carney trying to hold it at the line. Does. Down goes Moen. And again it's held in by Carney. The veteran walks it to the roof right to the top of the slot. Tips it. Back now for Dimitra, and out of the box is Kunitz, who receives the stretch pass. He's in on a breakaway. Kunitz goes. Oh, he hit the post. 
He went to the forehand as he got around Backstrom, and he rung it off the pummel. I don't know if he got the post, Johnny, or if Nicholas Backstrom actually got across with that right toe. Down to 2.05 to go now as Depenta comes up the right side. Up the glass, knocked down by Janssen. Shannon will hinge it back. Huskins. Once more for Depenta, who hammers it off the boards, and that will elude Brad May. Janssen taps it along. And back behind the play, Adam Hall, oh, look out, is fighting with Huskins, and Thornton came from all the way across the ice to get in there. Now Brad May has a hold of someone. Bayou and Shannon are ragdolling one another. Depenta trying to get at Bayou as well. Koivu is down on the ice for the Wild. That's who Brad May was tangled up with. You know, Sean Thornton, Thornton may very well be given a third man in here. Well, I think he will. But the reason why he went after Adam Hall is that Hall is trying to go Kent Huskins into a fight. And Huskins isn't a fighter. So Thornton does his job. He will get a third man in penalty. And you know what, it was Kim Janssen, excuse me, it wasn't Miko Koivu. Janssen went down and, and turtled when he had Brad May in the vicinity, which is understandable because that's not going to be a scrap that he wants to get involved in. This all comes with a minute 48 remaining in the third period. Well, here's the play where Hall goes after Huskins and grabs hold of him. Now keep an eye on Brad May. There's Shannon that's chasing the puck into the corner. Top of your screen is, is what's going on. May and Thornton now comes over and does not want Adam Hall to take advantage of Ken Huskins. And uh, there's no doubt that he's going to get a third man in for that little altercation. Well, this all came moments after Kunitz came out of the box on the breakaway. Now the fans are calling for Bugard. Bugard saying, I can't wait to get on the ice to knee somebody else. And the discussion continues. Brian Getzlaff telling him to sit down. With a minute 48 to go, Almost a foregone conclusion at this point that the Wild will force a game five on Thursday back in Anaheim. Brian, you said select a, a limited amount of seats still available for that game? It's going to be some game. I don't think if you're interested in seeing that one, you might want get to on the horn. Get on the horn to Honda Center. As Bugard comes over the boards, and this is a situation Paul Dvorsky and Dan O'Rourke and the linesman Andre Rasico and Lonnie Cameron are going to keep a close eye on. You saw Getzloff skate over near Bugard, but you know the Ducks are not interested in having Getzloff try to take a pound of flesh out of big number 24. No, definitely not. You kind of know what's coming. So if you're on the ice, keep the sticks up high. Well, the Ducks have Getzloff, Perry, and Penner out there. Penner lines up next to Bugard in the faceoff circle. O'Donnell and DePenta defensively. You know, there's history with Bugard and the Ducks, of course. When Todd Fedork was in the lineup, remember, it was the punch of Derek Bugard that essentially ended Todd Fedork's career as a member of the Anaheim Ducks. He is an absolute monster. 6'7", 270. Shannon is reported to the Anaheim penalty box. We never really got any clarification from the public address regarding all the penalties. Adam Hall has gone off. A lot of players have gone off with just a minute 48 remaining. Even a minor penalty is going to spell the end of the game for you at this point. And now they're blowing the horn for the referee to try to get more clarification. 
Hopefully they've got a little more clarification than we do. I haven't heard a single penalty yet. Well, Anaheim's only got four players on the ice. So this Minnesota is, has five, so this is a power play situation for the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, uh, there's a major to the Ducks, apparently. That is the carryover penalty. So the Wild go on the power play to finish the game. Their seventh man advantage of the hockey game. Skula at the point slides it across, and that one's hammered through traffic by Ralston and held by Jaguar. That's a good stop by Jaguar. He had to look around the traffic, set up in front by Bugard. Bugard was on the doorstep looking for a little garbage to squirt loose. And that puck was redirected. You know what? Bugard got a stick on that point shot. Number 40, Anaheim, Ken Huskins, five minutes reflecting. Maybe not a stick, maybe it was a leg. Sean Thornton. Bugard's been a factor in this game. The extra penalty is the match given to Brad May. He and Thornton each get game misconducts. And five for fighting the Huskins. And Hall, who apparently got nothing extra. And he was the one who basically started it all when he took the run at Huskins. Under a minute to go in the game as Skula hands it off for Ralston. Now Radovojevic in the high slot. Skula fires it wide. And the rebound shoveled the length of the ice by Getzlaff. Minnesota said going into this series, Johnny, that they needed to turn this into a speed series. They were unable to do that in the first three games. Tonight, we saw that wild speed. They got into the open ice, and they got very dangerous on the attack. O'Donnell will clear once more. We're down to the final. 20 seconds of the hockey game. So game five in Anaheim on Thursday night. As 10 seconds is all that stands between the Wild and their first ever playoff win against the Ducks in eight tries. Well, when you think about this from a Minnesota perspective, they got the style of game they needed to win game number four. Because they took care of business in game three. They got the split that they needed. They can close out the series by winning at home. Our Miller Lite player of the game tonight was Mark Parrish. He got a goal. He got four shots. And I thought he was very dangerous from start to finish. Detroit Red Wings thus far. Aginla now to Lanko. Back to Aginla. Aginla trying to get away from a couple of checks, dishes it off, Lanko with a shot.